Hey up. Right, uh, three years ago, in fact, it's getting on for four years ago now. I made a video explaining that tyre pollution was going to be the next big stick that governments were going to use to beat motorists over the head and get them off the roads. I made some predictions in that video, which have come true. Um, if you would like to re-watch it, I'm playing some of the footage from it here now. Information button, top right hand corner of your screen, click on that and it'll take you to that video. The electric vehicle is having some difficulties in the market, not just here in the UK, but worldwide at the moment. But the legislation is now in place to force electric vehicles upon us. I would like to think that that will change in the future, but we've got no guarantees that it will. The point is, the legislation has been put in place, and for the moment, the public have swallowed it. No one's kicked off, and the government considers that to be a done deal. Let's move on to the next thing. Tyre and brake pollution. You see, the whole point of electric vehicles is they're not a replacement for the internal combustion engine car. They're just another device to get vehicles off the road. They're too expensive, they're not particularly convenient, Depreciation is ridiculous due to the fact that there's no way of telling the true condition of the batteries. And, of course, there are some dangers associated with the batteries. Um, recently, in the States, certain fire departments have been lobbying local government that they quite simply are not going to be able to cope with the fires from batteries when full EV uptake takes place, because they're struggling now. And of course we've got some local governments around the UK and Europe foisting huge parking charges on electric SUV owners on the grounds that the lifetime's emission of these vehicles are higher than that of an ICE cap. I think I heard that in certain parts of Paris they were charging €200 Euro just to park an electric SUV. Which of course is the absolute opposite of what our government has been telling us for the last three or four years about electric cars. The whole situation is a mess, but don't forget, two years ago, Trudy Harrison, a minister for the Department of Transport, announced to the public that the days of private vehicle ownership are over. We need to get out of that, that sort of mindset. That's the agenda that they're working on. It's to get rid of of personal motorised transport, which is why the pretense about electric vehicles is now gradually being dropped. As I've said, they consider the forcing of electric vehicles upon the motoring public to be a done deal now, so it's time to move on to the next thing that turns the thumbscrews on the motorist. And as I predicted four years ago, that will be tyre wear. Actually, I'll rephrase that. It's particulate pollution from tyre wear. Now, I think it's important to establish uh, a timeline with this. The UK government and other governments were well aware of the potential hazards of particulate uh, pollution from tyre wear. A long time before I published that video, in fact, about a year before I published that video, the UK government had already commissioned some research to be done on this subject. And that actual research was carried out by a UK firm, Emissions Analytics, in, I believe, 2020. Now, the actual years and the dates don't matter. It's the order in which it happened that matters. And I fully admit it, I'm playing devil's advocate here. This is supposition on my part. You see, the results of that research were published a few years ago, with very little fanfare. It was there if you knew where to find it, but it wasn't put in an obvious place. It wasn't pushed in people's faces, because I think at the time it didn't really suit the government. This was the next phase. At that point, they were still battling to get us to take EVs. So this research report was sort of uh, an ace up their sleeves, ready to uh, play when it suited them. Because the results of that research are quite surprising. Pollution from tyre wear represents about 52% of the pollution created 
by road use, by motor vehicles. Due to advances in um, emissions control on modern ICE motor vehicles, particulate pollution from tyre wear had actually overtaken tailpipe emissions. In fact, it's currently at an all-time high, and there are a number of reasons for that. Some of which are mentioned in this report, and some aren't. And I will try and find a link for this report, or at least some articles reporting on it, in the video description down below. For a start, vehicles have gotten much bigger and much heavier. And of course, there's been an increase in vehicles on the road, which has resulted in tyre particulate emissions overtaking tailpipe emissions. Now, when I read this report, um, <laughs> It did seem to me that the brief had been to show electric vehicles in the best light possible because it talks about ICE drivers driving within the legal limits but driving aggressively, creating more tyre wear particulate pollution than a responsible EV driver accelerating with care and making full use of his regenerative braking system. Which is, of course, how all EV drivers behave. Except it isn't, because I pay attention. Teslas are the cars that you can definitely identify as being electric vehicles on the road. And whenever I'm at the traffic lights and I've either got one in front of me or one at the side of me, they are always the first off the mark and well into the distance before I am. Electric vehicles are very powerful, they produce a lot of torque, and their owners like to take advantage of it. And I can also say that on dual carriageways and motorways, it's very rare that I overtake a Tesla, but they're constantly overtaking me. And I think the only reason that the argument could have been contained in the report that I read was that it's a little bit of whitewashing to try and mitigate the fact that obviously electric vehicles are about 30% heavier than an ICE vehicle. And we've all seen the reports on various news feeds about EV owners complaining that they're going through two or three sets of tyres a year. Now, I think this is a ridiculous comparison to make, and it was purely put there to try and mitigate the problems again with EVs. Not all ICE vehicle owners are aggressive drivers, and by the same token, not all EV drivers are environmental saints. So if you read that report, ignore that part of it. Now, this report has suddenly been thrust back into the limelight. I think it was due to an article in the Wall Street Journal that I don't have access to because it's a pay-as-you-read publication. But it was cited and reported on by the New York Times and I think it was the Washington Post. And then, of course, the UK newspaper started to pick it up. Now, there are some things that simply don't seem to be taken into account um, in this study. There are two major advances in road safety instigated by governments, um, which I think help to exacerbate this problem. Namely, ABS and traction control. These safety devices are not generally used as safety devices by a lot of drivers. They found that no matter what the road conditions are, they can accelerate quickly with impunity, knowing that the uh, traction control will take care of business for them. Likewise, ABS. It encourages drivers to drive fast and brake late, which will cause more tyre wear. You know, back in the old days, um, we accelerated carefully and we braked carefully depending on the road conditions because we knew there was a possibility of an off or a crash if we got it wrong. To a large extent, these safety devices have taken away the skill, if you like, or the judgement required when driving. A lot of drivers and riders just leave it up to those control systems to get, take care of business for them, and they drive and brake more aggressively. So that's the government's fault. The nanny state in action has created unintentionally, admittedly, more pollution. Now, one thing that has been omitted 
from this report, or at least it's not clear, are the driving conditions at the time of testing. The actual testing procedure itself has been quite ingenious. What they've basically done is they've put collectors behind each tyre on the various different cars that they've tested, which, being collectors, have collected the particulate matter from tyre wear over a thousand mile distance, which has allowed them to quantify how much pollution different tyres and different vehicles produce whilst employing different driving manners. That's uh, aggressive and calm driving manners. But what they don't mention are the road surfaces, and in particular the weather conditions. Now, different actual conditions or state of repair on different roads I, I don't think that really comes into it i'm sure it makes some difference but i don't think it would make a huge difference what does make a difference is whether the roads were wet or dry and looking at the equipment that they've used i don't think it would actually work effectively if the road surfaces were wet you're relying on tiny for want of a better word, nanoparticles of rubber coming off the tyres and being collected by these collectors. And from the description that they've given, these collectors require those particles to be dry in order to collect them. Now, as I've said, the report doesn't make it clear whether these were a mix of wet and dry conditions. In fact, it doesn't really mention that at all. But the question entered my head, would it work correctly in wet conditions? And is there a danger of the wash, if you like, picking up particulate matter left behind on the road surface by other vehicles and depositing those particles in the collector, thereby contaminating the results? Or did they only carry out these tests in dry, warm weather? Because if they did, that could have significantly skewed the results. Water acts as a lubricant between the road surface and the tyre. We all know that. And if you've got a lubricant between the tyre and the road, tyre wear is going to be significantly lower. And I can't see any indication that that has been factored into the results that have been published. And England is a pretty wet country for four months of the year, from, let's say, October through to March, even well into April. The roads tend to be pretty wet a lot of the time. And I think it's safe to say that even during the spring, summer and early autumn months, we encounter a lot of wet roads. So have their testing methods overblown the realities of tyre particulate pollution because tyre wear is naturally going to be much heavier on warm dry roads there's more traction there's more friction the tyres are softer and more prone to wear so it's not such a leap of faith to conclude that tyre wear is likely to be higher now the only comparison I can make for this is, is back in my old days pounding the V I always bought the same brand of shoes same brand same model doc martin shoes in black during the winter months in cold wet or even icy weather i would experience very little wear on the soles when we got into the dry warmer months they would wear down very quickly i'd go through two pairs a year and the lifespan of the soles before the war through was always shorter in summer now i'm not stupid i know the dynamics of tire wear are different but the principles are the same and just going back to um, the reports of electric vehicle owners who complain about the lifespan of tyres on the cars, just going from memory, a lot of these reports seem to come from, you know, American owners who drive in the warmer states. So, can the emissions analytics test results really be trusted? And can they really be considered a benchmark test for all regions of the world? You know, hot countries, cold countries, temperate climates. I think the values that they've reported are probably going to be different depending on where you live. Most of the concern about tyre wear pollution is coming from, you know, the particles, if you like, getting into waterways. 
rivers and particularly oceans. Because these particles don't stay in the air, they fall to the ground, they're washed into rivers and brooks and they eventually found the way to the ocean. And it's been reported that 28% of the microplastic particles found in our food in fish is from tyre wear. Now, modern tyre compounds are made up from synthetic rubber, which is derived partially from oil, and it contains lots of nasty elements, including carcinogens, which we're ingesting when we eat fish. The problem is, finding it in fish doesn't tell us the source of that pollution, because once it gets into the oceans, it could literally have come from anywhere. Finding these particles in a fish that was caught off the coast of England doesn't necessarily mean that those particles came from England. They could have come from Florida. Approximately two-thirds of the Earth's surface is covered in ocean, and all these oceans are interconnected. So at the moment, I'm not entirely sure just how accurate and relevant this emissions analytics report is, but one thing is for certain. It's trying its very best to be kind to electric vehicles. And it is that new stick that is going to be used to beat motorists in submission over the next few years to get more and more cars off the road. What form that will take is unclear, but it's going to happen. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not railing against pollution being a bad thing. It is a problem and it is something that we need to do something about. Um, I did read about some developments that have been made in new tyres that reduced wear by up to 30%. It doesn't go far enough, admittedly, but better driver education could help. Better education on, you know, manner of driving and keeping an eye on your tyre pressures because that makes an enormous difference to tyre wear. I mean, I remember as a kid that constantly had public information films playing on TV about tyre pressures and the way that you drive. You don't see any of that now. But if I'm honest, I don't think any of that is going to happen. What they're going to do is they're just going to start legislating us off the roads using this as an example as why we've got to fall in line. And as we've seen in recent months, that legislation, those penalties, are going to start hitting AV drivers as well. Let me know your views on the situation in the comments section down below. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and doing so helping to support this channel. I do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you would leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. Now, one thing I mentioned in my last video, if you do subscribe, hit the notification bell and ensure that your notifications are enabled. And if you're already a subscriber, check that you're still subscribed and that your notifications are still enabled. Quite a few people came back to me in my last video telling me that they had been mysteriously unsubscribed from this channel or the notifications have been turned off. Now, YouTube is just a huge mass of software and various elements of it are constantly having to be updated. And I think what happens is when it does an update, it returns certain settings back to default. So not just for this channel, but for all channels that you might be subscribed to, it is worth checking the status of your subscriptions from time to time. You can, of course, if you wish, help the channel out in other ways via my Patreon page or via the Super Thanks button down below. Either way is much appreciated. I am, of course, going to be back next week. So until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.